Hey there, welcome to Content Jefe. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how you can network as an introvert. I'm a big time introvert and I had the opportunity to attend an event um, this last uh, month. It was Podcast Movement, is an event that I was uh, been wanting to attend as a speaker for a long, long time. And I applied for Podcast Movement back in May and they said yes. And it happened in August, right before my birthday, and off I went. And the experience was a very interesting one. I'm going to share it with you here in this episode. But if you're an introvert like me, really, really trying to network, trying to make content and you know that your business and your content depend on the connections that you make with other creators or the connections that you make with your clients or your prospects and you being social and putting yourself out there and you're a big time introvert then this episode is for you let's get started hot sound school presents content heavy the podcast that helps online business owners make better content and more money. Let's heavy it up. If you're an introvert running your business, you know how hard it is to go to bed every night thinking that you didn't speak with one person that day. Everybody is telling you, all of your business coaches, the business coaches that you follow on social media, maybe you have a business coach. And they tell you that business are all about people and the connections that you make with people and the importance of attending networking events and becoming a speaker. So if you're an introvert, you go to bed with this like thought that you are letting people down, that you're letting your business down, that what's going on, right? You're not alone. I have that too. Let's just put it that way. And here's my experience. So... I went to Podcast Movement, very excited to be there. I think that the whole venue and the whole event is so well organized and so well put together when it comes to inviting new podcast creators and also businesses in the industry and also experts in podcasting like me to come together to this event and network and learn from each other and connect. And the podcast community is a great community to be part of that we are all very welcoming group of people. So I got there and I, the first person I saw is one of the sponsors that we have created content for. Everything was going well. And we just went to the opening social event and I started to feel a little uncomfortable. There were a lot of people there and, um, I started having a little bit of a panic attack. Um, I don't know why. And also because we're getting to a point where our main channel, the Pod Sound School, is hitting the 100,000 subscribers then or getting to be um, recognized by the industry. So I run into people who knew me and who wanted to say hi. And <laughs> Whew, that was... I was sent in. <laughs> um, I didn't know how to respond to that. I, I was friendly, of course, but uh, it took me by surprise. The whole three days that I was there, I attended just one keynote presentation. And maybe I went to a couple of presentations more. And then I did my presentation. And I connected with a few sponsors for our channel. And that was it. I had a big freak out at my hotel room. I felt like I didn't want to leave my hotel room. Um, I felt like I didn't know anybody. Um, I just uh, started feeling very isolated and I wanted to go home the very next day I got there. So here it is. I just put in it out, all in the open. Um, yeah. So up until that point, like, Last year, I attended another event and I had a similar experience of me just wanting to go back home, of not wanting to connect with people. I would just go to back to my hotel room and feel very exhausted and depleted and just wanting to hide. So um, 
thinking about this whole experience and how it, I could have done it better, I think that there are many, many things that I could have done better. So I came home and I did a little bit of research, like, you know, is there hope for me? Is there hope for us introverts? And yeah, the, you know, we just have to deal with the fact that we are introverts and that that doesn't make us any less worthy of attention or of connection or uh, um, us not deserving to be at places or, you know, take a seat at the table. It's just that we have a different way to interact with people. And I hope that you take this to heart, that there's nothing wrong with you and that there are plenty of introverts out there having successful businesses and uh, being really incredible at um, doing what they do and recording content. And so it's okay for you to be an introvert. You can still hit your goals and accomplish all of your dreams. So I have some tips for you because I'm not here for you to feel sorry for me or to share my stories and not to like, okay, Veronica, like, you know, wh how, what are you, what are you going to do for me? Like, how are, how are we going to overcome this? <laughs> Let's say I, I have an event that I'm supposed to attend next month. What am I supposed to do? So the first thing that I should have done that I didn't do that you should do. Oh, well, that's a lot. <laughs> is to bring somebody with you, somebody who's going to keep you accountable, something who is going to kick you out of your room and lock you out. Just kidding. Somebody who is going to, you know, be there to kind of walk you through if you're having a little bit of anxiety building during the event. And for me, that would have been like bringing one of my kids, you know, bringing Steven which he's an antisocial too. I don't know how would that would have been any better. But so if you are thinking about attending an event, just think about bringing somebody with you. It can be somebody from your team. It can be, you know, a family member that is going to help you. Not to not be an introvert, but to push you to do things. Because if you don't have anybody there with you, then you're just going to hide in your hotel room. At least that's what I did. Make sure that the person that you bring with you is not going to stress you out or make things worse for you, that that person is going to be there to support you, especially if you are going to be a speaker and especially if it's going to be the first time that you will be giving a talk. So bring a person with you. The other thing is if you're not bringing anybody, then you can connect with anybody who's going to the event. Usually these events, they have apps or they have communities that you can join before the event, like weeks before the event. And you can see who is attending the event. And uh, you can see also who would be a good fit for you, somebody who you would like to like connect with. And then that way, when you go there and there's not a lot of people that you know, you're not familiar with the place, everything is new, then at least you're going to have that familiar face there and you'll be able to connect with that person. If that person is an extrovert, you may be able to see if they're extroverts or not by looking at their social media. If they jump on Instagram stories, like nothing, you know, like, uh, like I, for me to jump on Instagram stories, like I have to plan it like for two hours. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not that bad. But you can see if they're extroverts and if they have attended other events. And even better if they are extroverts, because then they're going to be doing the networking for you. They're going to be doing the talking for you. And you can uh, just relax and focus on just taking it all in and connecting with the right people that you want to connect to. Which takes me to the other point is like, not lower your expectations and not realistic expectations. I hate when people tell me you need to have realistic expectations. Like I can have any kind of expectation I want, but I want you to go in thinking I'm going to connect with two, three people. If you are an introvert and you have a list of 20 people that you want to talk to and have meaningful conversations, that may not happen because it's a lot. But two or three people, two or three key people that you want to connect with, whether you want to collaborate with them, whether they're going to help you 
to get more clients or you want to be on their podcast or whatever, then I have a list of those people because it's very hard to connect at these events. I just hate to go to the social events. I sit down and learn and take notes and uh, go to the keynote presentations and the different presentation. But when it comes to the social things, the music is super loud. You know, people can hear you. You have to talk very loud, which I'm not a loud talker. You have to enunciate. Then when people talk to you and then uh, you didn't understand what they were saying, that you pretend that you understood and the whole thing becomes very uncomfortable. Or is the other way around? You can see in their face that what you just said, that it didn't register. So they look like, you know, it's just, the whole thing is weird. And then you add alcohol to the mix. And then you also add, you know, refreshments or food or anything. And it's just even worse because then your mouth is full of food when they ask you a question. So I tend to stuff my mouth with food to ease my anxiety. To soothe my anxiety. <laughs> so anyway, that was two points. Bring someone with you and just have a, your expectations check. And then connect with somebody before the event. The other one, very important, is to take breaks. And I do this when I'm working out. I start on Monday and I do leg day and I'm at the gym for an hour and a half. And I just like bring it all out. And then by the time Wednesday rolls around, I'm already exhausted. So if you're one of those who get to those events and then the first day you're just trying so hard to, to be out there and to talk and, and then by the end of the first day you're completely depleted the, to the point that you can't leave the room the next day, then there's a problem. And then one of the things that I found that are very good for us introverts is to take breaks. Maybe you can go and attend, you know, certain events or a meet, or the social parties that they do. But then, you know, after an hour and a half, maybe after an hour, then you go back to your hotel room. Maybe you can attend a couple of events before lunch. Then you take lunch, maybe take a nap, and then go back and hit another talk or another event. So make sure that you schedule breaks where you can go and be in your hotel room, breathe, take a shower, just recharge your batteries. And then go back to deal with people. <laughs> also, very important before you go to the event is to have a schedule. I didn't have a schedule. I was all over the place because I was focusing on putting my presentation together. So I didn't have a schedule. When you have a schedule, when you are planning before you even get on that plane before you drive to the place. You already have a schedule and you know that you're going to stick to that schedule. You know that you're going to show up for those things and you commit and you also schedule your, your breaks in between because you know that you are going to be a little tired. Then that's going to be more helpful than you getting to the place and not knowing what to do or what. You know, I, just, I just got there and I just didn't know what. What, what the hell? <laughs> so yeah, do that. Schedule things and stick to your schedule. Another thing is that try to not bring your worries. If your mom just tried to let go of the, all of the mommy duties, just let the husband take care of that. Don't bring any of that with you. Don't bring work that you're going to complete while you're there or any of that. I don't think it's a good use of your time. You are in this place full of people with different stories, with different backgrounds, with different experiences, connections that can really help your business or your content to reach that next level. So instead of you bringing all the work and be stressed in your hotel room trying to work and missing out on the opportunities to connect with other like-minded introverts, <laughs> Then you're there worrying whether the, you know, the house is clean or whether your kids are doing their laundry or whether they're destroying things in the house, whether they're eating on your West Elm couch or other things. So that was my spiel. 
my episode for today. I hope that you enjoyed the episode and that you got value out of it. And I will be very, very interested to know if you have gone through a similar experience as me, if you're an introvert too and you have the same worries that your business needs you to be out there, but it's hard for you to do it. Let me know if you want me to make another episode about you know, introverts recording YouTube videos or introverts doing podcast interviews or any of that. I can put together an episode for you. Yeah, don't be a stranger. Just leave me a comment. Leave a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to this episode, just make sure that you go to my social media at Pod Sound School and then you send me a DM and you say, hey, Veronica, like, you know, I hear you. I'm an introvert too. My whole Goal with this podcast is to grow a community and to bring value to you. And yeah, just enjoy more of the Content Heavy podcast and I'll see you in the next episode.